Hey, this is Michael Lindsay from Vital MX, and we're back for another in-depth bike feature. Today, we are looking at Chris Bloss's 2022 Motul AJE Motorsports Gas Gas MC250. The AJ team has been around for a few years now. They originally started out on Husqvarna's. Now they're on gas gas machinery for the last I believe, two or three years now. They're based out of Arizona and coincidentally their star rider, Chris Bloss is also out of Arizona. Chris has a long time relationship with Racetech and that has kind of followed him over into the team. They're in charge of the suspension and engine duties on this team, starting with the engine, a lot of people know it, the KTM Husqvarna gas gas engine is a great platform to go racing with because there are already so many high quality components. And talking to the guys, they're like, man, there's not a lot to update in this motor to really gain a lot more power. They're using the standard valve train, which is from Dell West. They're using a stock cam, although we believe they have played around with possibly optimizing the cam, possibly redegreeing it. And then the piston is from CP, albeit it is done to race tech's specifications. The rod and crank are both stock. They're already a Pankle setup. There's not a lot of performance uh, upgrade they feel like in this area. And then the clutch is a recluse torque drive, albeit it is a little bit older style one. It still uses a center coil spring instead of the bevel washer. They felt like the, the riders had thought the overall feel and engagement of that style clutch for them on this setup was a little bit better than the bevel washer style. They do use a manual can chain tensioner from Nihilo Concepts. And outside of that, the team also uses a Vortex ECU, which is mapped by Race Tech to Renegade SX4 Pro Fuel. And they also utilize an FMF complete exhaust system on this bike, albeit it is a factory spec pipe, um, actually left over from when TLD was on the bikes as well, and it's been gifted to them. It is a little bit different than the production system. Again, as we usually mention, it's not necessarily better performance on the standard bike, but works with the race package that they have implemented. Suspension wise, they use the production WP rear shock, albeit Race Tech breaks open, does all their work to it, adds gold valve and changes the settings to Supercross. On the front of the bike, however, they do use the WP 48 millimeter exact pro fork, which initially comes with cone valves, which again, Race Tech pulls these out, adds their own gold valve system and tunes them to the rider's liking. Basically for them, the bike has an air fork stock. The riders wanted a higher quality spring fork. That's why they have introduced the exact pro kit fork, but the production shock, the production WP shock on these bikes is actually pretty darn good when set up. So they didn't feel the need to spend the money to buy a bunch of these shocks, especially when you start adding up that every rider on the team would need a race shock, a practice shock, a backup shock. It's just a really good cost savings for them considering they were able to get the performance they wanted out of the production unit. From a chassis standpoint, the bike is fairly standard. They have played around between the standard upper engine hangers and some carbon fiber ones from P3, which there seems to be a split decision amongst the team of which they like better or not. And then other than that, they also use ride engineering split triple clamp. Uh, this one is a half millimeter different offset than what is stock. You'll also find other accessory items on the bike, such as Flow Motorsports folding lever designs on the bike, both front brake and for the clutch. The front brake rotor is a little bit larger from Galfer. It is a 270 millimeters up from the stock 260 mil. And the team is also working with Pirelli this year, coming over from Dunlop to Pirelli this season, utilizing the MX32 Scorpion mid hard front and mid hard rear. The wheel duties on this bike are handled by WUSA. They, of course, based on their title sponsor, do use Motul products throughout the bike, including their 300V oil. And we see other items on the bike, such as Mika medals, handlebars and sprockets, guts racing seat, and just a few other little accessory items to get the guys the exact package they are looking for. The AJE team is not a factory team or a factory support team. They do get some parts allowances, bikes, do other things. So this kind of gives you an idea of what a support team's bike looks like. It's not as exuberant or over the top as some of the factory or factory support teams we see, and there isn't as much to talk about on the bike, but they do focus on just the right things to give their guys a competitive enough package to race with inside the top 10 and even top five in Supercross. If you enjoyed this feature, make sure you subscribe and give us a thumbs up here. If you subscribe, you'll be able to see more of them. We're doing a ton this year on all the factory, the satellite bikes, the privateers, pretty much anything we can get our hands on. And if you also just wanna learn more about these bikes, the tech, the race weekends, 
Check out vitalmx.com. Our homepage is full of a ton of that, particularly our pit bits feature, which we do every single race weekend because the condition these bikes show up in at the first round we shot them, it continuously changes. There's new parts being introduced all the time, new helmet, new gears, and a lot of great goodies. And we post up that feature every single race weekend. So make sure you check out our website as well. And thank you for watching.